G'day team and welcome back to the channel. My name's Tony and as always, this is the Mighty Overlander. And if this is your first time to the channel, make sure you hit that notification bell and subscribe button and uh, you'll know when all of my content goes live. It definitely helps the channel out an absolute heap. Now today we are in the workshop with Phil the Mechanic. Phil? Mate, how are you? Fantastic. And that means it's going to be another install. And today we're going to be installing the K-On Australia rear table drop down shelf and card. Now this is absolutely brilliant. It's basically a drop down self leveling table that goes on the back door of the chimney and I reckon this is going to be one of the best mods that I'll probably put on the car in the fact of its utility and you know just the convenience of it. it's going to be absolutely brilliant but first mate this is a new workshop yes had a bit of a change bit of a move recently so uh, down here at Forge Automotive in Midvale um, so doing a lot of uh, Japanese uh, performance cars you know the you know, 90s through 2000s, all the turbo stuff. I'm getting flashbacks from our childhood. Oh yes, all the flashbacks. So those of you that uh, know us personally, Phil and I have been friends for almost, what, two decades? Yeah, a bit, bit, 20, longer. Yeah, yeah, a bit about longer. 20, 22 years, about two year 2000, I think yeah. it was. And we used to get around and things like uh, 180SXs, you had a Skyline sky at the yeah. time. We are rat bags, basically. And I grew out of the car scene and went off and did my, my job that uh, I'm not ever going to tell you about. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but Phil never grew out of it. Nope. And he became probably the best mechanic in Perth. And um, like I've always uh, said, he's kind Ooh. of like one of the most honest guys. He's like David Putty out of Seinfeld. He's the honest mechanic <laughs> in the city, guys. So if you come down to Forge, these guys will definitely look after you. But look, today, mate, what have we got? Look, another bit of kit from Kaon. These guys love you. They and do. Um, look, I like installing their gear because it's usually mint straight off the bat, fits nicely, all the gear, happy days. Happy days. Now, as always, guys, full disclaimer, Kaon did send me this gear for free to install on the car, but my mantra is always the John West method when it comes to accepting gear. It's all of the gear that I don't accept, which means that the gear that I do take on is always going to be good. So we're going to get stuck in. Phil's going to give you his, because he hasn't seen this kit yet at all, he's going to give you his quick impression of it, like we've done with the other K-On gear that we've installed. Um, and then we're going to get stuck into installing this bad boy. Happy? Let's get on with it. Let's do it, mate. All right, Sam, so let's open this up. Now, we've already taken it out of the box, but we'll open up the rest of the packaging, and uh, Phil's going to give you f his first impression. So uh, I'm actually really excited about this one, though. It's looking pretty good. I like the, uh, once again, the old uh, prototype for the Moto Overlander on the instructions. Stickers. Little Always, stickers. yep. All the usual gear. What's this one? Just a note to say thanks. Hope your install goes smoothly, Tony. Merry Christmas, and hope we work well with you more in 2023. Oh, thanks, Emma. Good job. See, these guys are an Australian business, family-owned business, and just uh, goes to show how much they, the effort they put in, guys. Thanks very much, Emma. That's brilliant. Alrighty. All right, so let's open the rest of this. Yep. Um, okay, first off, we've got what looks like the actual, actual table, table itself. What do you reckon? Oh, look, once again, it's, it's what we come to expect from K-On. So once again, all CNC'd, pressed up, uh, all the fittings are installed. So. My guess is that this is going to be kind of like a whoop whoop situation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's put that to one side. Uh, this looks like side brackets side and brackets the actual, and I dare say the large section will be the actual, uh, the replacement card section, which All is right. actually bolted to the door. So, so that there, uh, if we've got a little, little opener, so this part here actually completely replaces the plastic trimming that's on the back door. And that means, I mean, this trimming's actually quite thick. It's about two inches thick. And that means that you're gonna maintain a lot of the clearance in the back of the car, uh, but you also get this really nice, nice little package. Now, one of the things that I do quite like about this one is that the trim actually matches the shape of the door because uh, as some of you may know, when you open up the back door of the chimney, it's not like a straight open. It actually comes out on a bit of an angle. And I'll show you that in a moment. But one of the problems that a few do-it-yourself table kind of uh, mods out there and stuff like that have got is they end up having to kind of like, um, like mount the whole thing on a bit of an angle. And it looks a little bit funny. But Kayon have gotten around that. And uh, we'll, we'll show you more about that as we go on. But it's absolutely brilliant. Now, because we do remove this plastic cover, there's a heap of random stuff behind it. And to uh, account for that, what have we got here? So it's the, basically the replacement section, um, all CNC'd out of, um, all, it looks like nylon there. Um, it's all beveled and chamfered. Um, plenty of nut certs already 
pre-installed and everything else ready to go. So I dare say uh, that will fit on quite nicely. And they've obviously got some recesses cut into there. I dare say for the door lock and uh, potentially um, any other mechanisms behind there. So. Cool, no worries at all. Now there's a couple of tools that we are going to need for a job like this one. Uh, so this looks like the side brackets and yep. stuff. So we'll put those on in a moment. Um, a couple of tools that you will need for that one. So what do you got here, mate? Um, look, pretty straightforward once again from the guys from Kayon. It's not too much. Um, M5 and M6 uh, Allen keys. We've got a, I've got a trim popping tool there. That's to take the original door trim off. Uh, 13 mil spanner. Now I've got my Rivnut tool here, but as per normal, the guys at Kayon have stepped it up once again, and they actually supply you an M5 nut oh, tool that they've actually machined. So does that mean if I was to give this a crack by myself in the garage, yep. and all I had was just my basic stuff that like, you know, Allen Hand tools, stuff. yep, you better do I'd this be at home. So you don't even need the specialist tools to do it. No. And just to show you what we'll do is we'll use both. Yep. All right, so Phil's gonna do a couple of these, then we'll finish them off with the, uh, the Rivnut tool, just so you can see there's pretty much no difference really between no. the two, except for one's is probably a little bit faster. Yep. Um, but if using the tools that you've got at home, you can crack this on straight away. Um, yep. Overall, what do you reckon? Oh, look, once again, the quality we expect from the guys at Kayon. Yeah. So, um, yeah, can't really, uh, can't really fault it as far as, the, as it looks straight out of the box. But um, proof's in the pudding and it's uh, all how it goes on the car. That's exactly right. All right, guys, so we're going to go through the first steps of this install. And uh, this is where Phil takes the reins of the Chan and uh, does a lot of the install stuff. And I'll sit behind the camera and make sure uh, it looks good, get his good side. Um, but one of the things that I do want to kind of stress is whenever you're using any of this kind of stuff, uh, first off, make sure that you read your instructions, yep. in particular talking about your torque limits and everything like that 100%. when you're securing everything to your door. But when it comes down to the door of the Jimny, now you can see with my vehicle that I do have a bit hanging off the back. This is about the limit that I'm going to go. So I've already got my garbage bag on there, which will be, you know, kind of in various stages of being filled. Mm -hmm. um, I've got my spare wheel on, which is a larger tyre plus that steel wheel that we put on. Yep. Then we've also got the Kayon gas bottle holder on there. As you can see, this starts building up. One of the things I like about this kit already is that they've used a nylon backing card. Yep. First off, shaving a heap of weight. Yep. So there's not much difference between the weight of this plastic here and that. So really, the weight just comes in to this piece here, which really is not all that much. So you're not adding heaps. But this is probably the limit of what I'm gonna be actually putting on the door. The main reason is, I've also got the, the ladder on the door as well. The main reason is, all of this, as you keep loading up these rear doors, because I've seen people put jerry cans, um, you know, high lift jacks, like oh, the whole all shebang, sorts. Right? Yep, 100%. And eventually what will happen is, is that you're gonna put stress on the mounting structure and also your hinges. Okay, so just a little bit of an advice there thing. Just make sure that you don't overload your door. This no. is as far as I am going to be going with the stuff that I'm hanging off my door. Um, but I can guarantee you this is going to be a real handy one. Especially with the corrugations, you know, any of the full driving oh, you guys yeah. are doing when it's fully loaded, you're going to start stressing, as, as we said, the hinges and also the main body structure. Um, look, I've got it with my own Nissan Patrol. I had everything hanging off the back and I've got tears in the, uh, in the body seams yeah. and everything as well. Yeah. So we want to make sure we don't overload it. Um, two things, A, you're going to fracture the actual steel and then obviously stuff like rust and everything else is going to start getting in there. So I um, want to make sure it all shuts up nice as well because the door will hang, especially in its open position with all the weight on it. If the hinges start to sag, you've got to shut the door, you're going to miss the, uh, the strike on the, uh, on the latch and um, you're going to have all sorts of dramas. All right. But for the most part, this looks a nice, neat little kit and I'm pretty excited to get it on. So let's get stuck into that one. First step is going to be to go through the instructions with Phil and then we're gonna get stuck into removing this rear door trim. Enjoy. All right guys, well I've looked through the k -On instructions. Once again, God they do a good job. All color photos, step-by-step -step instructions, uh, all the newton meter values on the bolts on the back. So familiarize yourself with these. There are a couple of little things in there you do need to be aware of before you start the install. Um, and look, realistically, one of the first straight off the bat is the rear luggage compartment. So factory fitment in the back here, there's a small little luggage compartment. 
with the Kaon rear door table, it's not going to fit anymore. Um, so they give you two options. You can either physically remove it from the vehicle or you can actually modify or remove the lid. Um, so that's the first thing you need to do straight off the bat. Because the last thing you want to do is fit it all up, go to close the rear door and um, go brake and everything with, uh, with the actual rear luggage compartment in place. So we're going to get stuck into removing um, the rear door card here anyway. I've got myself a nice little trim tool. If you don't have a trim tool handy, um, a decent flat blade screwdriver uh, covered in a rag or soft cloth will do the job, just so you don't mark any of the paint. Um, and really it's just um, getting behind the pop clips. Once you get two or three in place, um, you'll be able to physically get your fingers in behind there. Just give it a nice firm pull and most of them will pop out nicely. Be aware sometimes you can break the clips, it's nature of the beast. Um, even, with the, even with the best tooling and stuff, sometimes they just don't like coming out. So just be aware and if you need to go back and actually physically pull them from the, um, the aluminium rear door section, um, you'll need to do so. Um, but we'll get stuck in and uh, get it pulled apart. All right, so just get the trim tool in, give it a quick pop. Once you've got that section, you can work on it along. Just give me a nice little firm pull, or push for the thumb. Cool, and then once you've done all the outside ones, there's one last one right in the middle, which can be a bit of a pain. Just gotta be real careful. There we go, not to crack them there. So there they are, the clips, a couple have popped out, but uh, in general, they've all come out pretty easily. You can see some stay in the door, um, so you'll just need to go by. Keep, no, keep going. Um, yeah, so um, uh, some are in the back of the door there um, that don't that physically pop out of the, the retainers in the plastic. So you just need to go back and pop those out um, gently. Cool, well, now we've got the door card off. You can see what we're working with. You can see uh, plenty of red dust here from uh, Tony's previous adventures. So uh, just be aware you might need to give it a quick wipe down. Um, next port of call is uh, there's a little earth strap just here. Uh, we need to relocate that. Um, and to do so, we need to just remove the uh, plastic backing here. Now, um, it's just easily enough to pull it back. Now be aware that the, basically the tar that they use to stick this down can get everywhere. So my advice to you would be as you pull it, just push it back onto itself and keep it in its original form. And at least that way you can then access what you need to without getting the black tar where you get some fingers, you'll spread it from, uh, from here to next week. So um, here's the actual earth strap we need to move. Um, so obviously there's not enough uh, physical room behind the door to have that there and um, we'll move it on down to uh, this mounting bracket here. Cool, so just remove that uh, 10 mil there. And the bottom one here on, the, uh, on this rear mechanism. Cool, so once you've removed the earth strap there, you need to flip it over because it's got a little tang there. And you flip it over so it doesn't uh, bend the tang. And refit the fastener. Make sure it sits in nice and square. And then that way it can always be put back in its original location. All right guys, now we're gonna fit the nut sets to the rear door. Um, there is 10 in total, uh, which is great because obviously when we fit the actual table to the vehicle, um, it's gonna be sec strong, secure, and you're not gonna have those rattles, especially over the corrugations and out forward driving. Last thing you want is a nice little rattle in the back of the car driving your nuts. So um, we'll get to fitting the nut sets and uh, we'll go from there. When fitting the nut certs, Kane have come up with a new uh, iteration of their rib nut fitting tool. Um, so they've gone away and machined something up really nicely this time. So they've got a nice needle roller bearing in there. They've machined it all to suit. So pretty simple, nut cert slips on the end. Tighten it all the way down, just finger tight. And then you use your spanner and your Allen key uh, to install. They push in, hold the uh, front end with the uh, spanner do the backup with the uh, Allen key, that'll tighten the nut cert in place, and then it's just as simple as winding it off and it'll leave the nut cert in place. Now I've got that one in place and showed you how to do it with the, uh, the K-On tool. Um, I'll do the rest. Now, there are two areas that we do not want to put a nut cert. They are clearly marked in the instructions, uh, which is this one here and this one here. So don't go putting them in there because you'll run out of nut certs and you'll run into a bit of a bad time. I'm going to do the rest with my nut cert tool and uh, we'll get it all sorted.
All right, guys, nut certs are in, and now we're moving on to the next step. Um, so there is a step in the instructions that they ask uh, you to fit these uh, nut certs here um, into the actual door card. Now, ours were pre-fitted from the factory. Um, yours may or may not come that way, um, but if so, you're supposed to screw them in with an Allen key just until they're flush with the top of the nylon. Um, so just be aware there is that step. Um, whether you need to do it or not will be dependent on there. Now, once that's all ready to go, we've got our M5 nuts with uh, the nice uh, washers underneath, so they are a countersunk, so they do fit nice and flush. Now these will be used to hold the brackets to the actual rear door card through those nut certs that you've just fitted in that last step. So um, the two brackets will fit along these ones here, and there's another set on the other side. So we'll get fitting those now. All right guys, now we're gonna fit the mounting brackets to the door card. Now there is a left and a right hand side, so you just need to be aware of where they go. So I've got the door card facing me, and this is the left hand bracket, which has the slot in the side there, um, and the slot goes to the bottom of the door card. So it will fit this way on the left hand side, and then you can see the right hand one has no slot, just a small hole in the bottom here. Um, the bumpers go to the top as well, which makes it easy for orientation. So we'll uh, fit those now. Now you do need to use the small length um, M5 um, bolts with the retaining washers. So there's six of those in total. Don't use the long ones because they're gonna go straight through the door card and it won't mount flat. So we'll just fit a couple of those now. So once you've got them in place and nice and straight, you can then tighten them down and then rinse and repeat for the left hand side. Easy done. Right, now the brackets are done, we can mount the door card to the actual door frame assembly itself, and um, we're just gonna get it started and loosely in place. Then we'll adjust all the, uh, all the gaps, make sure it's nice and centered, and then we can tighten them all down. So if you need, you can always get a friend to help. In this case, I'm good, so I will get it sorted. So start in the top right, cor top right corner, just get one in, a couple of threads, and then same with the left-hand side. Just with a couple of threads, it'll hang by itself. Then you can go in and start all of them with a couple of threads in. Don't, be, uh, don't get too gung-ho and start tightening them all the way down because you won't be able to get the adjustment right. And just like with this one, you wanna make sure you get them started and all in, otherwise you're gonna cross thread one and cause yourself a world of hurt. Now, Kayon do mention in their instructions that the top two We'll need a little bit of pressure. You're going to have to physically press on it uh, to get them started because of the contour and shape of the door. So make sure you get them all in, get them all uh, loosely started, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to uh, adjust it all up and get them tight. Right, the door card's now fitted. I've gone through and just checked all the bolts. Um, fits like factory. That's the best thing about this. It follows the contours of the door um, and where the original door card went. Um, super strong like I'm moving the physical door, everything with the spare wheel on, the whole lot, um, that isn't going anywhere. So now we'll move on to the table um, part of the install um, where we'll get that all mounted up and um, see this thing come together. All right guys, let's get stuck into fitting the table to the door card itself. Now we've got the table and also the fasteners that uh, attach it. Now there is two different sides to the fasteners. You've got one which is pretty straightforward, which is just uh, the bolt and nut assembly which holds the uh, right hand side. But on the left hand side, we've actually got the release for the table. So it's got a spring assembly, a nylock washer, and a little pull tab. So you need to make sure you follow the instructions correctly, correctly to make sure that it all works as it should. So we'll get stuck in. I'll get my mate Tony to give me a hand holding the table, and we'll bolt this up. All right, guys, a little bit of pre-prep for fitting this step. So we've got the uh, spring-loaded level adjuster on the left-hand side. So we've got this nice little anodized knob here and the spring assembly. So to put it in, you've got to put the spring. It goes inside the knob from the top side. You can see with the uh, lettering on the top. Then the Allen key bolt goes in over the top, which then will actually give you the, the spring. And then we've also got a nylock uh, washer. 
Now the Nylock washer will go between the bracket and the table itself, and you'll see that on the install. There is already a pre-fitted Nylock um, nut set on the table itself, and um, that'll screw directly into it. All right, Tony, come here, big boy. All right, right. here we go. So, hey. <laughs> table assembly. Now, the table, the ridges face upwards. So don't put it in upside down because it won't work. You can also tell because it's got this nut set on this side, which is for the left hand. So I'm going to hold that in place. All right, now is this going on the inside or the yep, outside? Yeah, it goes on the inside. On the inside, Roger. Now the big thing is with this one on your side, Yep. the dome head bolt goes through. Oh, oh that's all right. And then there's a little um, washer. Okay, so, so I'll get me, me fingers in there and yep. I'll, I'll hold that one for you. Yep. Get out of it. <laughs> This is the challenge. All right, here we go. All right, so I've got that there. All right, so you want to line that up. Yep. Throw us that there. Yep. There we go. And you got a little, Give it a little wiggle. Yep. In. Yep. And you've got that one there. Yep. Now. So then there's a nylock nut that goes on the end of that little dome head. So just so you see here, guys, I'll just show you. All right, so you've got this little nylock nut. All right, and I'll do a close up of this in a sec so you can see. You can see here, so this is the spot that I'm talking about, all right, just in the corner. Um, you push this uh, this nut through. What size is that one again? So that'll be an M, that it's an M6 dome head. M6 and then, dome? Yep, and then you'll have the flat washer in between the bracket and the actual table. And that's in this tiny little, little space. Space just in, in the here. gap there. Yep. yep, that's right. And then obviously the uh, nylock um, securing nut goes on the outside. Right. And they're great because you can tighten them but you don't over tighten them to the point where it doesn't stop the mechanism from moving right. and the nylon stops them from coming loose. So that's Fantastic. why they've supplied that. So that one's finger tight now and now we're going to go over to the other side and see the installation of the level adjuster. All right guys, so we've got the level adjuster that we've already pre put together, but just a reminder, it's spring on the inside and then bolt through the top and we've obviously got the nylock washer there as well. So same as the other side, the washer goes in between the table and the actual bracket. Now, I have put the brackets to the outermost edges when I did bolt it down to the door card, but it is a touch still a little bit tight, so you might need just to adjust it, get it in there nicely, if it'll play the game. There you go. Now, because it's... Hey, oh, it isn't going to play the game. But um, yeah, so leaving the opposite side loose will aid you in getting the actual washer in. Now the whole idea of the nylon washer is it slides up and down the, the actual bracket itself without catching. There we go. Cool. I might get Tony just to pass me the uh, M6 Allen key, just that one on, the, on there for me, mate. The larger of the two. Yep, this one here. Thank you, sir. Oh. Thank you, sir. <laughs> And just wind that one in. Now remember, the, when you tighten up these two sides, they do not require to be tightened up to all depth because you want to be able to physically make the door, the actual, uh, sorry, the table work and the sliding mechanism works. So just double check that you haven't over tightened and back it off a touch to make sure that physically works. This is what I was talking about, about the self-leveling component. Uh, a lot of them end, oh, kicking doors here. Uh, a lot of them end up like, setting them up like on this angle and that's what this is the genius of it i love it i reckon it's great yeah so you can you can see there if it's level actually physically parallel with the door it's left hand down whereas when you lift it back into place self-leveling locks into place and it's actually level that's and we haven't even finished the install yet and you can see how that's working so Brilliant. that's a great bit of kit we'll tighten these up and then we'll get on to the last section of the install all right guys, now we've got the table fast and secure. Um, just a quick little reminder um, that the table will not fold up into the closed position if you have it in the level position here because it's actually on, a, on an angle. So what you'll find is you'll try and put it up and this edge and the bracket will rub. You're gonna take the powder coating off, you'll bend the brackets, it'll be a bit of a mess. So make sure it's always in the low position and it closes up nicely because if it's in that top position, you're gonna have nothing but issues on that left side. So um, just a, a quick little tip there. For All right, you. guys, now that the table is uh, mounted to the door card, uh, we're gonna finish the install. So we've got two lengths of reflective power cord here. Um, now this is to uh, set the level of the table in the locked upright position. Um, so we've got to weave it through the top bracket here and then 
down into the front of the table here, and this will obviously hold it in the level position um, when you're using it. Um, great thing is, paracord, nice and strong, reflective, so you can see it at night, especially when you're out um, camping in the evenings and the night time. Um, we'll do this side, rinse and repeat on the other, and then uh, one last little bit, and we're done. Right, so there's two holes in the uh, right side bracket here. So we're gonna come in the outermost hole first. Now they have, uh, when they've cut the paracord, they have melted the end, so there won't be any, hopefully there won't be any fraying. And it does try and make it a little bit easy to put it through. There we go. So you come up through one and down through the other. Now pull a full length, uh, pull some through, because then that's gonna allow you to tie a knot. So we'll get all. I'm no knot tying expert, but get something in there that's gonna do the job and then peel it back through and it'll sit underneath where that bump stop is. You're not even gonna be able to see it, but that's gonna stop it nice and tight. Now we'll move on to the table end. So same thing again, work from the outside in. We'll go through the first hole, down through the second. Now this is where I would probably stop and work out parallel for the table. So we just feed that back through. Just make sure it rests. Obviously you'll have two, so the other side will um, pull up on its own. And just get that nice, now there I'm thinking it's looking pretty good. So nice and flat and parallel, yep. And then once you've got that position, you can pinch it with your thumb and then it's got a second set of holes which will help lock that into place while you tie the knot in it. Um, and then that will mean that rope is not going to pull back through. So even if the knot does come loose, you've still got two lots um, there to physically hold that in place. And even without the knot there, that's held. Obviously, there's no weight on it. So we'll tie that knot off, rinse and repeat on the other side, and then we'll uh, finish off. Right, now that we've got the paracord fitted, you can see the table in its um, down position, how you would use it out uh, camping and whatnot. Now it's time to put it in the upright position and try and keep it there. So um, the guys at k have come up with a great little idea using some uh, bungee cord and some actually some 3D printed bungee buttons they've done themselves. So we'll uh, have a look at those in detail and get them bolted on. So k have done a great job with 3D printing these little bungee buttons. So they've got a nice little triangle pattern here. And if you notice on the actual table, there's a triangle there um, to mount them to. So they fit pretty straightforward, pass them through the hole and mount them. Now they should point, um, sorry, I'll get them the right way, should point that way. So the actual bungee cord wraps around and keeps the table in a secure upright position. Little Allen key through the front, nylock and a washer on the back. So we'll get them bolted down and uh, then we'll get the bungee on. So it fits in there nicely, flat washer on top, another little nylock nut, 10 mil. So just make sure when you're tightening it up, you do have the button in the hole nicely. It's a triangle shape, so you can't mess it up. Obviously make sure it's in the correct orientation. And then just give a little nip up. Doesn't need to be super tight. So there we have the bungee button fitted in the correct position. Um, perfect fitment, no issue. So now it's just a case of running our bungee cord through the two holes here in the bracket, tie them off in a knot, they'll sit around here and keep the table in the upright position. All right guys, so we take that bungee cord, it's obviously been cut again and nice uh, melted edges so we can feed it through, through the top hole, little knot. Pull that through. Now the biggest thing here is you've got to make sure that the table sits up against the, the rubber um, button on the inside and then you can work out how much you need. So don't be afraid to tighten it up a bit, being that it's bungee cord, it will stretch, and then you can get an idea on how much you want to feed back through, plus a little bit more, because you do want the tension on it, so it's not going to flap around, which is why they've used the bungee cord. So you might have to do a, a little bit of trial and error to get the correct length of your bungee cord. First go, how good. And that's what you want. You want that to snap back into place. It's gonna hold it in place. This is only one bungee cord, and that's gonna bring it right up to the rubber bump stop. It's gonna stop it rattling and carrying on. Perfect. 
All right, team, well, look, uh, install complete, and what a neat little piece of kit. Now, this is one of those items that I think I'm gonna use a hell of a lot. Now, especially when you're in those camping scenarios, you pull up somewhere, all you wanna do is just have a sandwich or a brew, you know, set your jet boil up or something like that. Um, and I think it's gonna be really handy, and it's utilizing some space in the back of the vehicle that just doesn't get used. And, and it looks absolutely neat as a button. That's absolutely fantastic. But from an install point of view, what do you reckon? Oh, look, super straightforward. Follow the really well set out instructions and you really can't go wrong. Yeah, I mean, look, km has been hitting the channel up now for about, what, six months or so. We've done yep. quite a few installs of their gear on the Jimny and all of it's been straightforward, good quality. But the best part about it all is it's Australian design and made. Yep. Um, a family owned company. So support your local guys because otherwise they'll go away. But just the very fact that we've got the innovation here in Australia to come up with you know, usable solutions, not just superfluous stuff that people just bolt onto the car for no reason, yep. but really good quality, usable solutions for, you know, especially in my case, for micro overlanding. So it's actually worked. Now, Kayon do a uh, range of these tables for various vehicles out there, so make sure you go to their website and check them out. Um, if you've got a cruiser or a patrol or a whatever, you know, there's, there's some version of this. I think there's even a version for um, the Pajero that we've got at home as well. So, you know, awesome. they're, they're a pretty cool um, little item. And one of the things that I like about this is in particular, um, when you pop them down, because that that table, um, that um, door is on that slope, just being able to lock that in place and having a nice, you know, uh, level point, I think that's brilliant. But the other thing I really like is this lip. This lip around here means that even if you are on a little bit of an angle somewhere, stuff's not going to roll off. No, that's you nice. Know, um, you can also go as far as having, I'm, I'm thinking about having a little cutting board um, made to slot and that will sit in there quite nicely. So I won't be cutting on this surface or anything yep. like that. One of the other things that I was actually thinking about, I don't know if whether or not this would be doable or not, is actually cut, sorry, Kayon, cutting a hole about yay big the same size as one of those collapsible buckets. Oh, so it slides into the top and, of the table. And you pop that in the top of the table as a little washing area. Maybe. Could do. Could do, you reckon. That's a pretty... Lads at Kayon, take note. You know, there's an idea. Actually, um, you know, and, but there's a, a million things that you can do with one of these. Um, but the main thing for me is that it looks like it's factory fit. It, it sits really nicely. And now I've just got this you know, fantastic little spot here, especially when I'm out fishing, stuff like that. Oh, set your tackle up. Set my tackle up, all those kinds of things. I think this is gonna be absolutely spot on. Um, the proof will, however, be once I take it off road in the next camping adventure in the start of the new year um, and see how it goes off road. The main things that I'm gonna be looking for are things like durability, obviously, but securing and for that ever important rattling. Um, mm. One of the things that I learnt when I was going across the Gunborough Highway, especially when it came down to things like um, the corrugations and, and, and the like. Oh, this is, see? Latch. Latch. <laughs> I know I'm going to forget that a few times. Um, is going across those corrugations is some of the gear in the back of my car um, sounded like there was a brass band in there, you know, <laughs> because um, and it wasn't, you know, any of the actual hard mounted stuff. It was things like my pots and pans and all those kinds of things. Or your loose gear. You know, so I have to come up with a solution for that myself. But at least when it comes down to all my hard mounted gear, that's not rattling. No, 100%. Either. You know, and, and the other stuff is, is basically a case of, you know, putting, you know, things in between it to stop it from knocking around. But at least my gear in the side, like, it's not rattling. And, and that's harder to fix. Yeah. And that's what I'll be looking for. But you know what? But... You know, I mean, there's a lot of force there to actually get pull the that table to, to away. get that to yeah. move. So I don't see like you know, you're looking at like this. There's nothing there. Nothing there. And you're moving the whole door, the whole the whole assembly there yeah, in exactly. one piece. So I think you're gonna be pretty well safe. There's the rubber isolators in place, it's all bolted down nicely. Good run you lads. Good bit of work, Kayon. Not bad, not bad at all. All right, Tambor, look, there you have it, the install of the drop-down table on the rear door for the Jimny from Kayon Australia. Once again, thank you very much, Kayon. And like I said at the start of the video, Kayon did send me this uh, for free to put on the vehicle as an install video and a kind of mini review. Like I said, I will do a uh, touching on this one once I head back out bush again, uh, kind of let you know how it goes full uh, stop. But that being said, 
once again, thank you. Hit that subscribe button, notification bell, all that good stuff helps out the channel. And I look forward to seeing you throughout the rest of 2023 for some pretty awesome adventures. We've got a couple of other mods Ooh. planned. I like so, it. So uh, Phil the Mechanic, uh, very much once again, thank you. Mate, always a pleasure. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you for the next mod on the Moddy Jimmy. I like it. Let's get on with it. Enjoy. Thanks, Thanks guys. team. Enjoy.